The year is 1969, and the muscle car wars were at their peak. Horsepower numbers seemingly kept on rising, as did displacement. Every automaker was trying to one-up each other at every chance they got with bigger and badder V8-powered monsters. The 426 Hemis, 427 Chevys, 429 Fords, and 455 Pontiac and Buicks roamed the streets of Detroit all looking to be the top dog. And when people think of the muscle cars that ruled the streets in 1969, most people would reference the Hemi Chargers maybe, the 396 Chevelles, or even maybe a 428 Cobra Jet Torino or other dealer available models. However, there was one GM special order muscle car that you couldn't just walk into a dealer and buy. But those who knew just how capable they were bought them at their first opportunity and turned them loose on the streets and strips of America. This is the story of the 1969 Copo Chevelle L72. <laughs> to understand the true might of the L72 Copo Chevelles, first we need to understand what the Chevelle was made for as a platform. The Chevrolet Chevelle was the mid-sized offering from Chevrolet throughout the 60s that shared an A-body chassis with the Skylark, the Oldsmobile Cutlass, and the Pontiac Tempest, all of whom made their own high-performance versions on the A-body platform, which we will cover in separate videos. The Chevelle wasn't as nimble as its pony car counterparts, but overall, it was a more spacious car with back seats that were a little more usable and a large trunk for storage. But the Chevelle was still smaller than the much larger Impalas, which made them the more advantageous choice to go fast. The Chevelle and all of its trim levels actually made up a pretty diverse lineup, with the smallest engine offerings being the pretty anemic 150 horsepower in line six, all the way up to the Chevelle SS, which was available with the potent L78 396 cubic inch big block, which made 375 horsepower and 415 foot-pounds of torque. Now, these L78 Chevelles were certainly no slouch in their own right. These were really serious performers and some of the fastest cars that you could get on the street in stock form. But for the true performance nut who wanted the power dial turned up to 11, with the added usability of the spacious Chevelle, the 1969 Chevrolet Copo 427 equipped Chevelle was the ultimate choice from Chevy and it's one of the rarest of them all. The word COPO stands for Central Office Production Order, which essentially signifies a special order car from Chevy that was done on the down low, need to know basis. You had to know that this car and engine combination was available and what codes to put in to order it. They did not actually advertise this vehicle in the dealer brochures. And this vehicle was only available in the lineup allegedly to be special ordered to compete in the NHRA SSD class of racing. The Copo L72 Chevelle utilized an iron block 427 cubic inch big block Chevy that was rated at 425 horsepower at 5600 RPM and an earth moving 460 foot pounds of torque. The L72 engines featured an 11 to 1 compression ratio, a large 780 CFM Holley four barrel carburetor, forged aluminum pistons, and a forged crankshaft. These L72s were the pinnacle high performance workhorse for GM. They made slightly less power than the L88 427s and the all aluminum ZL1 engines did, but the L72s were far easier to use and live with day to day on the street which is what made these Chevelles so awesome. Also, the L72 was quite a bit less expensive than the all-aluminum offerings. These were brutish powerhouses, but they were also, again, livable for street use. These Chevelles could be ordered with a four-speed M22 or M21 transmission, or even a Turbo 400 automatic. All these L72-equipped Chevelles featured 12-bolt positive traction rear end with a pretty nasty 410 rear gear ratio. As for performance numbers, these L72 Chevelles could do 0 to 60 in an estimated 5 seconds and crack a 13.3 in the quarter at a respectable 108 miles per hour, which are great numbers for a stock car and especially for the Chevelle, which is a tad bit heavier than its Camaro counterparts. But here's the coolest part. You would never know that this Chevelle was that fast by looking at it. 
these L72 powered Chevelles were actually a bit of a sleeper in their day. All of the Copo L72 Chevelles were based off a base model Malibu Coupe and not a Chevelle SS. They got the hood and front grille off a Chevelle SS, but a standard Chevy Malibu interior. So from the outside looking in, unless you popped the hood or knew a lot about these cars, most people in 1969 would have just thought that this was a regular Malibu with some SS go fast parts thrown on it, which let it fly under the radar and surprise lots of would-be victims light to light. And even cooler than that was the fact that Don Yanko himself ordered 99 of the L72 Copo Chevelles to sell at his dealership as Yanko Chevelles. Don had proven by this point that he could sell pretty much any run of fast cars that he could get his hands on from GM, whether it be a Corvair or a Camaro. So buying 99 of these Chevelles to sell exclusively at his dealership with a markup seemed like a solid plan, considering that pretty much every customer wouldn't know how to get a 427 equipped Chevelle through the special order Copo process. The Yanko L72 powered Chevelles all got fitted with the signature Yanko stripe package and some 427 badging, which made them lose their sleeper status. As anybody at the time would see all the Yanko striping and badges and know that these cars meant business. Furthermore, the Yanko Chevelles could also be special optioned with headers and a different air cleaner, which marginally increased power over the stock L72 ones, but overall, stock for stock, they were pretty much identical in performance. Besides Yanko's large order of 99 cars, there were 251 other 427 powered L72 1969 Chevelles ordered and sold through dealers in the US, which means in total, there were only about 350 L72 Chevelles ever made. And the MSRP on these 427 Chevelles was right around $4,000 at the time, depending on options, which was about $800 cheaper than a base model 350 powered 1969 Corvette. And if you ask me, while I do love the Corvette, a 427 Copo Chevelle versus a 350 powered Corvette, I would have to take the Chevelle pretty much every time. Today, these L72 Chevelles are among some of the most collectible muscle cars of the era, and they regularly trade hands well into the six-figure range, with the last one selling on a trailer for about $175,000. And there's no signs that these are going to get cheaper either. But again, just like any of these old historic muscle cars, not every single one of these L72 Chevelles has been accounted for. So there's hope that one day, one of us can stumble upon a barn somewhere in rural America and under a tarp and decades of dirt will be an L72 Chevelle or possibly something even rarer. Because even the Yanko L72 Chevelles, we only know where about half of them are. The other half remain a mystery. But that is the short and fascinating history of the 1969 Copo L72 powered Chevelle. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.